Hey y'all, it's Taylor from Tattoo Teacher Plans. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Today I am doing my summer favorites and it's a lot because I haven't done a favorites video in a while. I have so much stuff here, but I'm excited to share it with you. Um, I took a little break from them just for a lot of reasons, but I'm happy to be back with this and let's just get into it. I've got some categories. I've got everything written down here in my plum paper, so don't forget anything. So let's get started. Okay, the first category is books, and I have been reading a lot more in 2021 than I was last year. Um, I just have gotten into kind of a routine. It's part of my PM routine, and I'm really enjoying it. I like to read a lot of variety. So first up is this one by Leanne Moriarty. This is Nine Perfect Strangers. My friend was raving about this one and there's a Hulu show coming out soon. So I wanted to read it before that. It was really good. I didn't get into it until like the halfway point, but then I like couldn't put it down. It's kind of a mystery, a little bit of a thriller, and it's just really kind of fun. You get to explore explore the relationships of like these nine people plus the leader of this retreat. It's very interesting. I thought it was super fun. Next is The Best We Could Do. This book is so good. I've been into graphic novels recently and this one is beautiful. The um, illustrations are really interesting and they're done kind of monochromatically with pops of orange which I thought was kind of an interesting choice. So this is the story of a child of immigrant parents who was born in Vietnam but grew up in the U.S. And she is kind of having to work out some things in her relationship with both her mom and her dad. And she really dives deep into their history and going through the Vietnam War and how it affected them. It's very, very good, but it is also very sad. Um, it ends well and like there's resolution and things like that, but this book is, it's kind of tugged at my heartstrings. I really, really liked it. Okay. This one is, okay. When you need just fluff and a break from the thrillers and the mysteries and the fiction and everything. Then you go for a series like this. This is by Megan Quinn. It's the Get Lucky series. This is the first of four books. I'm on the fourth one right now, but I feel confident to recommend it. They're so cute. Each story is kind of different. It follows four brothers and they've been cursed with broken love based on like an experience they had in New Orleans. And each story is so good. My favorite was the number two and then number one, but I like all four of them. Each brother is very different and each relationship they kind of get into is very different. So definitely recommend this series. They're very, very cute and they're all on Kindle. I, this is the only one I actually bought as a book, but love the Getting Lucky series. This book, The Alice Network, was one that was recommended to me by a friend. This is actually her book. I need to give it back to her. This one was so good. It tells um, dual stories of two women in Europe one is American, one is British, and they go through, each of them go through one of the world wars, and then they kind of meet up after World War II, and their storylines kind of collide. And I thought it was so interesting, and it actually made me cry, and I just really, really enjoyed this book. Um, not cry in, like, necessarily a bad way. I really, really loved this book. I don't really like sad books. Um, this one is just a mix of history with a kind of mystery in the background and really strong, interesting female characters. So definitely recommend this one if you're into like World War One and Two history and like stories of women. Okay, here's another graphic novel that I absolutely adored. Now I have read The Handmaid's Tale. It was years ago, probably about 10 years ago. This is the graphic novel version and it was excellent. I love the show, so I just was drawn to reading. Plus, I love, I'm in a graphic novel phase, but this book, the illustrations are beautiful. It's like true art, like just incredible, and it was really interesting to read the story in kind of a different format. It's just so, so good. I read it in about two days, in like two sittings, and I, I just loved it. It's one that I will probably go back to and reread, um, because just the, the artwork was amazing and then just kind of that story is just so powerful. So I definitely recommend this one. It is by, the art is done by Renee Nault and of course it's 
Margaret Atwood. And then this is probably my favorite book of 2021 so far. It's so, so good. Highly recommend it. This is The Firekeeper's Daughter. I've already, like, I won't shut up about it, like, anywhere I've recommended it to everyone. It's amazing, and I can't wait to read more by this author. This is her first book, and it's incredible. It's the story of a young woman. She is 18, I think, in mm, Minnesota, one of those states up there. And she is a Native woman, and she is grappling with not only kind of mourning her father, but also dealing with some of the politics within her tribe, mixed with being drawn to her mom's side of the family, which is white, and then the politics of the town. It's just like a lot of stories woven in. She goes through a lot, and she's so strong, and so um, her voice is so, like, true. I don't know how to explain it in a way that's, like, it's just so good. I don't, I, I just love this book. It's amazing. Not only does it have a mystery, it has a love story, it has really good resolution, and it also taught me a lot about Native culture. I am fascinated by it, and this book really highlighted, because the author is Native too, um, she really highlighted the beauty of the Native communities, along with, like, the difficult things that they're dealing with. So, highly recommend this book. It's incredible. So one that I don't have in front of me because I've already given it back to the person I borrowed it from um, is called The Broken Girls. It was really interesting. It's a mystery um, mixed with kind of a character who's trying to figure out who she is and what she wants along with just a dark kind of good ghost story. It was just fun and I didn't take it too seriously. It was just kind of a, a break from more heavy books that I've been reading. So definitely recommend that one as well. All right, it is movies and TV time. So I love movies and TV shows. I just, it's always been something I've been interested in and I love just really good storytelling. So the one, again, can't shut up about this one either. Mayor of Easttown is incredible. It's on HBO Max and it is so, so good. It's a one-off series from what I understand. And it is an incredible story of strength and truth and just a lot of good, solid characters within the show. I really enjoyed Mayor because she was just kind of trying to do her best, but also struggling with all of these outside factors in her life. And she dealt with it how she could. But she made mistakes along the way and at the same time dealing with her personal stuff she's also dealing with this um these murders and kidnappings and things like that so i just thought it was so well done and kate winslet should win all the awards for that i also enjoyed jenny and georgia it kind of surprised me how much i liked it i thought it was just going to be another like kind of teen show but it turned out to be more of a mystery, which I really enjoyed, and I can't wait for season two. I thought that I was going to just kind of like it, but by the end of it, I was like, I need more episodes. It's so good. One that I finished in about a day was on HBO Max. It's called Starstruck, and it was just such a fun show. It's about this New Zealand girl who is in London and she's been living there for a while but she is just struggling with figuring out who she is and being an adult and she meets this actor. She doesn't know that he's like a famous actor when she meets him and then they start a relationship and she just kind of like pulls and pushes with him throughout the whole series and I really was surprised by the depth of the show as each episode went on and I don't know if they're going to do more episodes, but I would definitely watch it again. It was one of those shows with like quick episodes. It was really fun. Okay, on the opposite end of the spectrum is Big Sky. It's on Hulu. And it's one of those shows that got interrupted by COVID. So there's not that many episodes of it. But each episode is like edge of your seat, exciting. And it's just like kind of scary too. I just really loved it. I thought the two female characters and they're kind of like, um, they, they're frenemies. They're like just 
a really good relationship that the two of them have along with trying to figure out who these monstrous people are and like bringing them to justice and I hope that there's more episodes. I think that there will be but um, I don't know. It's like I said it's one of those shows that just kind of like they popped in episodes here and there because of the filming and all that but I'm hoping that they come out with more because it's really good. Okay, I can't not mention The Handmaid's Tale. It came back this year and it is just an incredible show. Every episode this season was perfection and there was a lot of action in this season that I really enjoyed. They went like to different areas of the United States and also just seeing some of the main characters like win for once was really nice and then leaving kind of you know of course on the, hip, the cliffhanger at the end just like thinking about what's going to happen next season just gets me really excited so always love The Handmaid's Tale it's just an incredible show and the acting is amazing and the storylines like they just keep coming up with stuff and the actors just keep showing up and making it amazing. Okay this is another one that I really just it's like a guilty pleasure kind of like the starstruck Never Have I Ever on Netflix. The first season came out last summer and I just like devoured it and I thought it was so fun. It's a teen show but it's written by Mindy Kaling and I love her. I'll read and watch anything that she does. So it was just really really a fun show and then like it got me in the last episode where I was just like bawling. Then when I um, heard the announcement for the second season I was really excited because they were kind of bringing in some different storylines and it's just such a cute show. I think it's something you could definitely watch like if you have a teenage daughter but also like I'm in my 30s and I still enjoy it because it's really funny and you can kind of relate to some of the things that um, the mom and the daughter kind of deal with together and separately. I just I think the writing is brilliant and the comedy is on point. All right, let's shift to YouTube. So I have some favorites for the past few months and I've definitely enjoyed some travel channels because we haven't been able to travel that much and The Endless Adventure is one that just stands out to me. It's a married couple. They've been married for like 15 years or something, but they're still like young and vibrant and they used to travel like all over, but now they have an RV that they've been renovating and they're traveling around. Um, just doing little trips here and there and they're just like really cute together and their renovation process has been really fun because they've made it fun and I have just have been shocked by like the transformation of their little camper van and it's just really fun to watch. They're just kind of an escape when you need one. Also in the travel realm is Allison Anderson. I recently found her just by chance and she is amazing. She is a photographer. I think she's just like a freelance photographer, but she also does videography and YouTube on the side. And so she will go out on these solo adventures and I love solo traveling. And so she just kind of has inspired me to do more of that and to kind of just get outside and do things and not be scared to do it alone. And she's just a really good um, videographer. Like she puts together beautiful videos and they're all really short. Um, she doesn't do a lot of chit chat. She really just like shows you where she is and really highlights the best stuff to do in different areas. And she visits places that maybe I wouldn't go to, but that are now on my radar. So I really enjoy her style of videos and kind of just like their little bite-sized travel pieces. Okay, the other two channels that I'm going to share are true crime. One of them is Eleanor Neal. She is a British YouTuber and she covers stories from everywhere and she just has a really good conversational style. She just sits there and tells you a story and she does a lot of research. You can tell that um, in her storytelling and she just does it in such a natural way and I just really enjoy it. You can, it's one of those where you can like put it on and then listen to it instead of necessarily watch and I just like I really appreciate her like straightforward style. And then on the other side is Brittany Vaughn. I discovered her probably like six or eight months ago. She's very funny but she also does a lot of research. You can tell that she puts a lot of effort into her videos. She does like kind of um, interest, wild and interesting makeup looks 
when she is talking through her stories. So it's kind of fun to watch her do like these intricate makeup looks that are just kind of like things that I would never choose to do but I love watching her put them together along with these like horrific stories and just the way she tells them kind of just takes the bite out of them but still you get a good glimpse of like who the person was and what their story was along with like her humor and just the way she tells the stories just makes me laugh because she uses like different slang words and just like she talks about them like in a real way that's totally different from the way Eleanor Neal does but I love them both. Okay I wasn't going to include any music because I really haven't been listening to any new music but then I really thought about it and I have a couple here and they're not going to be any surprises here. Um, Olivia Rodrigo her album is it's just catchy and fun and I just want to listen to it all the time. I think it's very reminiscent of the music from the 2000s. I think a lot of people have said that and it just is kind of nostalgic and it's just like the beats fast and it's just fun. I just, Sometimes you just need fun music. And then Taylor Swift's past two albums are just masterpieces to me. And the most recent one was really, it came at a time where like, it just kind of fit in my life and it's just beautiful music and each song is so different and I just love it. The third one is Leon Bridges. I have loved him for a very long time. I saw him open for the Dixie Chicks back in 2016 and he's just an activist and his music is beautiful and he's just so vibrant and just so like, I don't know how to explain it. His music is like colorful in a way. It's so in your face and and then when, oh, it's just I don't even know how to explain it it's so beautiful if you have not listened to Leona Bridges and you like soul music and um, he's even kind of dabbled in the pop realm just check him out he's amazing and then also his inspired Spotify lists are so good I will listen to them all day okay for podcasts I have a wide variety here. So I'm on a wellness journey just trying to figure out some things with my body as I get older and just to kind of address some things that I have put on the back burner. And one of the ways that I can kind of decompress from the intensity of that is to listen to Maintenance Phase. It is really funny. They cover um, wellness topics but they like expose the bad ones and I've actually learned a lot of things that I didn't know basically because I was too young to know about certain things in the 90s like the full story and they have really like deep dived into some things that I thought I knew about and I really didn't and they just kind of expose really terrible diet advice and diet books and people and all kinds of stuff it's very very interesting and super well researched also kind of in that same vein is Diet Starts Tomorrow. It's by the Betches Gals and it just is kind of like one of those that I reach for when I need a little bit of realness. They're two friends discussing their struggles with all kinds of health things and so it's just kind of again refreshing to watch and listen or listen to I should say. Um, people talk about it in an honest way and kind of expose their struggles it just is one of those where I'm like, yeah, me too, me too, you know, on everything that they talk about. Um, and it's been really interesting to listen to their journey as they have kind of learned more and dropped some bad habits and picked up better ones and things like that. So I definitely recommend that one if you like Betches and you also kind of want to explore some wellness uh, topics. Okay, these three that I'm going to talk about are true crime related, or at least in that realm of um, relevancy. So one of them is That's Messed Up. It is an SVU themed podcast. So each episode, they talk about an episode of SVU, and then they break down the true story that it's based on. And then they also have a guest from the episode, which is so interesting. They've been able to get some really good guests. And I have been watching that show for as long as I can remember. Like I think from the beginning, because I have been a murderino forever. And that show or the podcast is really fun because it's two comedians 
that put it on, but it's also really fun to go back and watch the episode. So they, they post a homework post um, each week. And so you have to do your homework so that you can be ready for the next podcast. And that's just been kind of fun to watch old episodes of SVU and then listen to their like retelling and everything. It's just a very fun podcast. Another one that's kind of um, in that same category is Dark History. I love Bailey Sarian. I've been a fan of hers for years now. She's just fun and I feel like we're best friends. Like we have that kind of relationship. And when she started this podcast, I was really excited. I thought that it would be true crime related, but it's actually history related and it's been really interesting so far. I've actually learned a lot from her episodes. They drop every week, I think. And she also posts on her YouTube if you're not into podcasts. And she just picks really interesting stories that are kind of lesser known and then exposes things that, like all the details of that thing. And it's just really interesting. Plus it's her. So she's very engaging and funny and she just kind of draws out all of the details in a fun way. The last one is Noble Blood. It is a history podcast. It's a very serious one, so it's kind of different from the other ones that I mentioned. It is a podcast based on royal people in history, and she really focuses on women, but she tells their whole story, not just the highlights, and her storytelling style is what brings me back. Her voice is so soothing, and I follow her on Twitter too. She's very witty on Twitter, um, but her show is just very serious and I'm loving it. I really enjoy the episodes because they're kind of short and then her storytelling style is just very, it's academic, but it's also like light because especially at the end, she throws in some fun um, little tidbits about them that are definitely not in the history books and I just have really been enjoying it. It's very interesting. And if you're into um, any kind of royal history or history just in general, I think you'd probably like it. So let's go on to beauty things. And the first one I have here is an honest blush. I got this at Walgreens. I don't know if they're sold elsewhere. I'm pretty sure they are, but I got it at Walgreens. Um, I have two colors. I have this coral one and then I have a rosy one. And in the summertime, they kind of slide off my face if I'm out in the heat. But I have realized that I really like clean cream blushes and I've tried several and this is my favorite. It just blends perfectly. I got some from Glossier that I thought I was going to love because everyone raves about them and I don't like them. They are like patchy on me. This is never patchy. This is always perfect. Very pigmented and if you put powder over it, it has some staying power. I'm really excited to use this more in the fall. I think it's going to be really good in the fall and winter because I wear less powder during those seasons. Okay, this is one that is a kind of um, all year round kind of love and definitely in the summertime. This is the Lumi Glotion from L'Oreal True Match. It is in the shade Light Glow. That's what I like, but they have some other shades that you might want to check out. Um, I put this underneath my foundation but over my primer and I just put it right here and then kind of up here down the bridge of my nose here and here. It's so pretty. It's just perfect. It sits very well underneath my foundation and it just brings out like a natural glow so that even if I don't put any highlighter on it's still gorgeous. Okay this is a new find that I have found this summer and it is so good. This is the Morphe Neutral Territories palette. It has nine shades in it. It's a little bit dirty right now. Um, they're all neutrals, obviously. And the formula on these is the good formula. If you have bought Morphe before, you know that they have a chalky, not so good formula, but this one is really good. And I enjoy all of the colors. There are, um, six mattes and three shimmers and I can get so many looks out of this because of the color combo. Um, this is what I'm wearing on my eyes today. Very subtle, pretty. This is going to be a lifesaver when I go back to work because this is basically all I'm going to use 
every day. It's just great. And it really uh, travels well too. This is a cleanser that I recently discovered in 2021 and I love this cleanser. I also use the moisturizer in the Hydro Boost line. I really like this cleanser because it does not um, dry my skin out at all and it really cleanses my skin really well. I use it at night and it's just great. I am enjoying it a lot and it was it's pretty like affordable and you can find it in a lot of places. I think I got this at Walgreens as well um, but this is just excellent. It's a basic straightforward cleanser. Doesn't dry your skin out. So this is a 2021 find as well. I follow Dr. Dre on YouTube. If you're not following her and you like skincare stuff, definitely check her out. She's amazing. She's an actual dermatologist and she just is like no nonsense. She looks at the ingredients and she tells you if it's worth it or not. Um, and she just knows so much. She loves Differin and I have started using Differin again I think maybe just like in the past year. I've been pretty consistent with it. It's really good for my skin and this moisturizer she recommends regardless of if you're using different or not and this is so good. I use it as my night moisturizer and it just has a lot of really good ingredients in it. It's still light though which I really enjoy and sometimes I'll put on top of this I'll put on my um my CeraVe moisturizer sometimes but that's just if I need like extra extra moisturizer um but this is really good it's it doesn't break me out at all and it works great with the different product if you're using a retinol or retinoid this is very helpful okay let's go into health and wellness so I've already mentioned in my goals video and even this video that Health and wellness is definitely one of my goals this year. It's been an ongoing goal, but I'm really digging in this year to figure out what does my body need at this age, at this time, just what do I need? So one of the things that I have really been focusing on is intuitive eating. This is the book that I read. It's very easy to read and it's chunked really well so I can like pick it up and put it back down, especially if I need a refresher on something, I can look in the table of contents and find what I need. But this book really opened my eyes to intuitive eating and that whole process. It is a process. It is something that I'm working on every day and I fail a lot, but I've also found a lot of success as well. And this was kind of the first step into listening to my body more and really, um, really noticing things that are negatively affecting me and also positively affecting me. So this has been really, really eye-opening. So the intuitive eating book actually led me to this book because I figured out some things doing the intuitive eating that um, maybe I shouldn't be eating or maybe I should be limiting. And then I kind of stumbled upon low FODMAP on some of the Instagram uh channel, not channels, Instagram uh, accounts that I started following when it comes to intuitive eating, they discussed a lot about um, kind of listening to what your body needs and then actually acting on that. And this book has been fantastic. I, um, it's not about weight loss. It says flat stomach, but that's about your, it's about your gut. Um, this has like, the first half of it is really informative about different types of food and ingredients in certain types of foods that you may be sensitive to. And I've already discovered some things that maybe I should limit or eliminate altogether. This really pointed those out to me in a way that was very clear because this was super helpful in the emotional side of it. And then this, I was able to kind of build on that idea of intuitive eating and go further with it. So um, I don't know where I'm going to end up with the whole low FODMAP thing. It's really to kind of just lead you in the right direction. It's not a diet or anything. So it's been really, really interesting so far. And as I get more and more into it and more like comfortable with it, I think um, 
this whole process is going to be totally worth it. And it's, it works really well with intuitive eating. These kind of really pair well together. Also with the intuitive eating, I found a YouTube channel that I really enjoy. She's also on Instagram. Her name is Colleen and she's fantastic. She's a dietitian and she is an intuitive eating dietitian. Her videos are so helpful. She really dives into like the real life day-to-day -day quest of intuitive eating and she really covers some of the tougher topics that the intuitive eating books don't really talk about and she really puts into practice all of the intuitive eating um, aspects and then is so real about it. I just really enjoy her channel. Of course I'll have everything linked down below. You can check her out as well but she just has been really encouraging and I've looked into her program. I haven't really like um the trigger on that yet but she just is really been kind of an encourager along the intuitive eating journey okay this last one is one that i think i've shared before but it's just a favorite so i feel like i need to share it again that is my work subscription so work is a dance fitness company based in kansas city and they have a studio open now and they have continued to post their homework uh, workouts, which is really nice. I thought maybe they would get rid of them once um, kind of they COVID subsided and things got back to normal, whatever normal is, but they are continuing it because people love it so much. And it's been really fun to just do these workouts that are really challenging, but so fun. And the time just goes by really fast and I enjoy doing them. I do them two to three times a week. So I definitely have my favorite instructors, and that would be Tiffany and Haley. But I also watch um, instructors, like, across the board. I like all of them. They all have different um, strengths. Some of them are, like, professional dancers. Some of them have more of a fitness background. So you really get, like, a lot of different variety with the different instructors. And it's only $5 a month. I don't know if that's going to change in the future, but it is worth every penny. Because if I was going to a class... I would, that would not even cover a whole class, I don't think. It's very cheap. They send you a link every day for the class and you can join it live or you can catch the replay. I usually catch the replay, but sometimes it's fun to do a live class if it's kind of falls into the right time period. But I just love work. It's been one of the things that got me through 2020 and also one of the things that got me back into fitness after my accident. It's something that I could do and modify and still have fun with it. And it's just been a lifesaver and I love it. And I don't see myself letting it go anytime soon. So let's switch to planning supplies because this is a planning channel mainly. Um, this has to be number one. This is my Plum Paper Vertical Priority 7x9 Planner. I love this planner so much. I didn't think I was going to love it this much. It's amazing. It's functional for me, but it's also given me an outlet for some creativity. So this has become my weekly planner, my everyday planner, and I am loving it. Next, I have switched to the Moxie Life Companion Notebooks. These little guys have all of the stuff that is in the big planner, but in a smaller format and in these little quarterly notebooks. And I am loving these. They are amazing. Not only do they lie flat, they're easy to write in, the paper's amazing, but it has everything you need from the big planner when it comes to goals. And so I'm just loving this. It's got your monthly goals. It's got your weekly actions. It's also got your quarterly compass at the back with some notes pages. It has everything you need and it's a little teeny tiny and I love that it lies flat because it makes writing in this a little bit easier. So this is a planner that I'm not using anymore but I still recommend and I really enjoy. This is the Planning Roses Planner. It is an A5 size but B6 kits work really well inside of this planner and I used it for almost six months and I really loved it. The format is really um, simple, but it leaves you enough space to kind of do what you want. Let me show you a blank page. So it has space for you to decoratively plan, but in a much smaller space. It's just great. I really loved this planner and I was sad to kind of put it to the side, but I just needed something a little bit more functional. 
if you're looking for like downsizing but still decorative planning, I think this is a great option. And she is coming out with new ones next year. And she still has some of these on her site if you want to check those out. I just really loved this. I thought it was fun. And the size was new to me. And I thought I was going to hate it. And then I ended up just loving it. So definitely recommend that. These guys make an appearance in every planning video I do on my plum papers these days. These are the Zig Color Dot Markers. These are great. They make perfect little circles for you in your planner. And they come in lots of different colors. They're kind of pricey. But I think they're amazing and they save you a lot of time. Not a lot of time. They save you some time and they're just like really clean, like the clean color dot marker. They make it look very clean and I just really enjoy these. I have like probably 20 colors at this point and I think I've got all the ones that I need. But um, yeah, loving the Zig color dot markers. And then I have a new favorite pen. This is the Pentel Energel Infree in 0.7. I got it from Jet Pens and it's my favorite. I love this pen so much. It's so smooth. It's so dark, like the ink. It's not too inky. It dries quickly. It's incredible and I'm obsessed. I have already bought some more and I feel like I need to even get more so that I don't feel insecure about not having enough. They're just really good. Um, yeah, I can't say enough good things about this pen. It's my favorite. Anything in the Pentel Aaron Gel family is great, but for some reason, these are like a step above. These are amazing, amazing pens. Okay, the last category is like my other or my random category. And these really are random things. So the first one is Woodwick Candles. I'm really a candle person. I'm, I have like a warmer over there but I don't really love them. I really love candles and these Woodwick candles are my favorite because they make a little crackle sound and there's just something about them that is very comforting and the scent is very nice. Like not only have I found some that I loved but I also love like the range of the scents. Like they can fill a whole room and then some. And they last a really long time. So I get these at Walmart, I think. I'm pretty sure I got these at Walmart. I've got several in my house. This one's used up all the way to the bottom. But I love these. They give kind of like an ambiance in a couple different ways with the scent and the crackle. And just, I just really like them. They're, they're really nice. And you can find them pretty easily. Okay, one that is a favorite for sure in this spring and summer is boba tea. We recently got a boba tea place. We have a couple, but and I've tried several, but this one is like my favorite one and it's not too far away from me. They're not open all the time, so I have to kind of figure out when they're there, but their tea is so nice and they offer oat milk, which is not my favorite alternative milk, but with kind of the low FODMAP intuitive eating kind of thing. Um, I've been cutting out some dairy and so having that option is really nice. Plus just their menu is really good and I just love their tea. I wish I had some here to show you. I was gonna grab some, but I forgot. But it's really good. It's a nice treat to have every once in a while. It's not something I get all the time, but when I do, I love it. And the last thing I have to share with you is Stitch Fix. I have been ordering from Stitch Fix for years now. I think I opened my account back in like 2013 or something like that. I have been ordering from them for a long time. And it's been really hit or miss. When I get a stylist that I really like, then I'll like buy whole boxes and stuff. Um, but lately I've had a couple misses here and there, but we're back on track. And I just love everything that I buy from them. So a couple of reasons why I like Stitch Fix is one, the items are unique. You can't really get them anywhere else. Um, also, they're tailored to you and your style profile. And then also they are things that I invest in, especially for work. And they are things that I wouldn't necessarily buy. They really get me outside of my comfort zone, not all the way out. Um, they sent me a romper one time and I was like, I'm 37 years old. I think my romper days are behind me. Um, but that's pretty, uh, 
rare that that kind of thing happens. They usually send me really, really nice things. And this top is from Stitch Fix, actually. I love this top. And I think it's going to be really fun in kind of the winter to switch it up and throw a cardigan over it and maybe wear it with leggings. It's so cute. I just, it's very light too. So I could definitely wear it for all seasons. But um, I really enjoy the option of trying on things at home and not having to go to a store. I can't remember the last time I tried on clothes in a store because of Stitch Fix. So um, I have a referral link. I'll put it down in the description for you. If you want to check out um, Stitch Fix, you can get some money off of your first try. And uh, I think it's fun. I, like I said, I've been doing it for a very long time. I have the yearly style pass, which is $50 a month and or $50 a year. And so I don't pay the styling fee. So I really don't lose anything by sending back things at all. Um, but I just really enjoy the process. And I always find fun things. And basically my whole closet is Stitch Fix stuff. So I'd say it's worth it. So that is everything for my favorites video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I know I did. I just have such a fun time putting together these lists and sharing them with you guys. Let me know what are your favorites from summer, your favorite books, anything from all the categories. Let me know down below. I'm always curious. And if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And I'll see you next time. Bye.